Hello YouTube and welcome to Gromforks. Today we are featuring another episode of Kerbal Engineering where we will be building a space shuttle. Um, this is something that I wanted to do for a long time, but for some reasons I never actually got around to it. Anyway, um, this is also like a tutorial how to build a space shuttle and note I am using it with Ferrum Aerospace Research and I will be using Mark III parts combined with two mod for the packs and one mod for balancing which I will introduce as I go along. And first let's place the Mark III cockpit and Mark III cargo bay and immediately as you see I'm filtering for the cargo bay some shuttle parts start popping up. So the first of those parts is actually the shuttle uh, forward reaction control system which is actually like a shuttle nose. Uh, and that one is a part of Cormorant Ironology uh, pack, which is compatible with 112, and it is by a forum user pack. Uh, then we have the second part, which is the rear, which is the sh shuttle lifting body. It adds a nice end to the um, to, to the cargo bay, and also puts like the ceramic heating tiles at the bottom which also provide a lifting body for the shuttle. Awesome piece, uh, love it. Anyway, now we're trying to place the airlock, but I forgot that I'm using, that I have installed part angle display mod, so it takes, uh, so that my controls for rotating instead of W, A, S, D, Q and E, it's control plus that, so it took me like a second or two just to figure that one out. But anyway, um, we want to place that one on the rear of the cockpit so that our carbonauts could actually go out and um, go into the cargo bay. Uh, then we want to put the cargo truss. Note that we will not be putting any cargo for this uh, shuttle, but we will be, so I'll be flying it empty when I will be testing it. But um, it is up to you then to balance it individually. I'm just showing the principles how it's made and then it's up to you to fill it and add cargo. So we have also added the docking port because if you want to dock to any space stations, clearly it's a way to go. Then uh, also one part is the shuttle OMS, which stands for Orbital Maneuvering System. And it's these two engine pods that we are putting on the shuttle lifting body to the rear. Now, uh, some people that might not be familiar with the space shuttle would think that the main shuttle engines are used for orbital operations, which is actually wrong. Uh, the shuttle for the orbital operations is using two smaller engines, which are called the OMS, and those two engines are attached to these pods. So, um, okay, let us just quickly uh, turn the, flip the shuttle around and you can see the beautiful ceramic tiles that have been added by the shuttle lifting body. So I just want to put the rear flap. This is like a one huge gigantic flap that helps stabilize the space shuttle on descent. And I'm immediately binding that to the custom group 10 to deploy and retract. So basically to toggle. So let's flip this bad boy once again to return and now we will be adding the engines. So um, I want to let's just filter for the shuttle and the engines are a part of a second or sorry not the engines first let's add the tail which is like the um, stock piece. Uh, then we will be wanting to add the engines. Engines I don't want to put stock but the engines I have taken from another mod Shadowworks uh, Parts, I believe it's called Shadowwork, Stockalike, SLS, and more by user the Shadow1138. Uh, and I will be using this Shuttle SLS main engine um, because they look cool and I believe they, I'm pretty happy with the way they look and work. Um, you can also put the stock, it is completely up to you. So these engines are used for ascent. These two other ones, the smaller ones that I'm adding, the OMS, those are used for orbital operations, like we mentioned. So right now, uh, I need to search for, I believe, wings and other control surfaces. So I 
Uh, and I will be attaching that to the shuttle lifting body. We want to be our shuttle to look as close to the actual real deal as possible. So we are attaching it down and then just to rotate to make them level. And then we will be attaching the elevons. So we have big S elevon 2, which for fits perfectly with this big S shuttle wing. And then we have big S delta, yeah, and the, the elevon 1, which also fits pretty nicely. Uh, that being said, I'm like a sticker for aligning them correctly, so I fiddle a little bit until I get the placement just right. A little bit left, right. And here we go. Perfect. Okay, now we want to tweak the control surfaces. Since our elevons, uh, I want them to be controlling uh, pitch and roll, so I'm basically killing yaw on them while the... Uh, the space plane tail fin, I want to be only controlling the yaw of the shuttle. So let us then add two more wings in the in the forward section of the shuttle. We will also be attaching them to the shuttle lifting body, a little bit fiddly sometimes, but nonetheless still working correctly. Let me just angle that and make sure that this one is angled correctly. Okay, and then we want to just translate it a little bit to the back. Now, the shuttle itself, it's not highly aerodynamic. I mean, it has to uh, endure, I believe, up to Mach 7, I think, on, on the re-entry, but it's high up in the atmosphere, so it doesn't really matter because the air is so thin. However, um, the report that I've been seeing from shuttle pilots describe it as a flying brick. And here you can see one of our problems with it. It's that its center of mass and center of lift are not exactly behind each other. Now, I could add some um, spoilers in the front, but uh, then it wouldn't no longer be looking like a stack or like a regular shuttle. So I guess we'll just have to balance it out somehow otherwise. Now, let's add the wheels. Uh, I'm not going for the large landing gear, not the largest one, because I think this one fits actually the build pretty nicely, putting it slightly behind the center of mass, which is the way you should put it. And let's name our shuttle. WYT, which is for YouTube Shuttle Mark 1, because I'm assembling it here for the you guys. Okay, overall I'm pretty happy what it looks like. So, uh, I just want to make sure that I am assigning the correct action groups. Uh, so, let's just quickly that. The 10 is already assigned. Then I want to put a 9 for the flaps and increasing flap deflection. Basically deploying flaps on the winglets, on the wings. And on this 8 to retract them. Uh, you have also app options to add spoilers, which I will put as air brakes. And um, if you are wondering what's the difference between a flap and a spoiler, I was actually researching that as well. Uh, flaps are providing additional stability on slow speeds and also during re-entry, while the spoilers are actually used once when the space plane lands on the runway to actually keep it down. So sort of like, actually it functions like an air brake. So yeah, let's put the group five for the like um, cargo bay doors and we will be tweaking the engines once we actually put it on the boosters. So uh, let's now quickly uh, add just another parachute because uh, shuttle has parachutes when it lands to help it slow down. So I'm just putting the radial chutes because obviously I don't have the real like uh, space shuttle -y shoots and um, I'm gonna put those two on the rear I mean it's I don't believe it's 100% like accurate but I mean it's closest that I can get in KSP I guess and let's put them on their separate stage okay during the putting I believe I have misplaced one of the parachutes on the radial one I'm just now trying to find it where is ah there we go okay Perfect. Now let's see how this thing performs on the re-entry. 
because at takeoff we are still not making it. And note that I haven't still rolled the main engines. Anyway, uh, we are using the monoprop for the RCS. And uh, these two, by the way, OMS engines are also tweaked to be using the monoprop, which I find incredibly cool and handy. Uh, as you can see on the re-entry, it's pretty much stable. Note that I'm not really doing much. I have put elevons on active and the spoiler on the tail on as active. And I'm still too high up for the air to be showing any resistance, but I just wanted to see that I can maintain high angle of attack and slowly decrease. Now the shuttle does become more flippy on the lower stages of the atmosphere, which I'm not showing here, sorry for that guys, but uh, I've noticed that if I would decrease the spoiler and uh, the flap uh, setting, this helps it stabilize a bit. I mean, the most critical part is the transonic area when we are passing between uh, Mach, well, between Mach 2 and Mach 1, but transonic area when we are going from Mach 1 to sub subsonic. Okay, so as you can see, so far performing nicely and heating wise, I just wanted to confirm that my descent velocity, I can maintain above the minus 100, which is kind of crucial when it comes to heating. So this was a little bit test in terms of heating as well. Okay, that thing being said and done, now we want to take care of adding the ascent vehicle, which means fuel tank and boosters. So now I'm searching for my shuttle and then I realized I basically need to flip to space plane hangar instead of um, VAB. And here it is, YouTube shuttle mark one. Uh, we need to obviously put it vertical and we need to close off the landing gear. Okay, that being said, let's start retracted. Okay, then the next thing we need to actually put the fuel tank, but we need to attach the shuttle, the shuttle to the fuel tank. And we will do that by using the decoupler, regular KSP decoupler, nothing really fancy. Okay, let us now try and do the search for the decoupler. I'm just now checking that it's correctly positioned. Okay, decoupler, and here we go. Standard radial decoupler, which I actually want to put on the center of mass. So just to put it on the shuttle, I think this would make it the most stable as possible. So let's put the radial decoupler. Here we go and the fuel tank. The fuel tanks are also the part of the Shadow Works stock alike SLS and more. I'm just now trying to see which one is the correct one. No, this is not. External main tank, five di diameter for the space shuttle orbiters. Okay, exactly. Anyway, funny story about so why is this shuttle tank orange? Um, initially on the first two launches, I believe uh, of the shuttle, uh, during basically tests and stuff, it was actually painted white, but given its mass, I believe NASA has decided that they don't want to paint it, and in therefore they were able to save 200 kilograms uh, on the takeoff weight. Imagine that. So that's the reason why this tank is actually like orange. Anyway, I think I have correctly placed the uh, the tank. I wanted to just make sure that the blue arrow was pointing through the nose of the shuttle, which you just saw like a minute ago. Uh, but now I'm putting it higher up because if you look like the shuttle reference photos, you will notice that shuttle is sitting very low uh, on the uh, on the fuel tank, and there's a good reason because center of lift of the shuttle wings is actually you want it to be as back as possible compared to the shuttle to the, well, vehicle's center of mass, which is mainly the tank. And I've also, when I was checking how it was aligned, the rear of the tank was aligned with the shuttle's thrusters. So let's just save it as shuttle with a fuel tank, because we want to have different versions of the shuttle in our VAB. And uh, then 
I think we want to add, um, I think struts and uh, fuel lines we need to add. So let us put first the strut. And also if you notice some pictures of the space shuttle, you will notice that it's also strutted in the front to the tank. So we'll strut it in the front and additional struts in the back, because after all, this is KSP and physics can go nuts on you. I believe the first shuttle when I was trying for this video was actually non-strutted and it danced all over the place, resulting in massive explosions. Okay, so let's put the two hydraulic decouplers because now we want to be adding boosters. And boosters are also the part of the Shadowworks uh, stock-alike pack. So I'm just once again putting shuttle and you can see sh space shuttle SRBs. So just making sure that they are correctly put on the well, hydro hydraulic detachment manifold, I believe. Um, so decouplers, I'm just now trying to see. It's kind of hard to see from this angle, but still. Uh, because what is off-putting to me is the center of mass, which is because of the shuttle, it's not exactly in the middle, in the middle of the fuel tank. And that's something that will give us a little bit of headaches when, um, when testing later. Anyway. Um, also, these boosters don't need to be aligned like that. Uh, the boosters should go further down if you compare it. And I think these uh, marked areas should coincide with the rear of the tank. Great. Uh, so what else we need to do? We need to add um, the nose cone and the struts, I believe. So let's add struts, strut the boosters to the fuel tank. Strut it also here in the beginning or at the top. I mean, note that I'm using the mirror symmetry because it makes my life a whole of a lot easier. Then we want to be putting the fuel line because shuttle main engines are being used using um, liquid fuel and oxidizer and shuttle doesn't have any of that fuel on board. So we have to feed that into the shuttle from the main tank. So. Uh, let's see for the nose cones for the SRBs. Uh, they come also together with this uh, SLS stock like parts. I think they're actually pretty cool, but I think I was looking for booster, which is wrong, and I should be looking for a nose cone, I think. By the way, I really love the search feature of the 1.1. It's just awesome. Now I started looking into the engines. Where are you? Where are you? And then let's put just nose cone. And here we go. SRB nose cone 2.25 meters. Note that these SRB nose cones also have um, separate trons inbuilt into them. Two of them to be exact. So you want to be careful also with your staging and also with their alignment. Now I believe the shuttle uh, shuttle SRBs has like these two uh, separate trons firing in roughly this direction. So I tried using symmetry, but it just works better like this. And also we want to make sure that our staging is correct. So uh, let me just quickly add the launch clamps. We want to be holding the boosters and the main fuel tank. I believe the shuttle is well strutted, so we don't need to attach that one. And now let's play a little bit with the, with the actual uh, staging. So uh, the boosters of the, or the separate trons should fire the same time as the, basically the hydraulic detachment manifold. So when we decouple boosters, they should also fire. And then I want the sequence of firing to be shuttle main engines, followed by the shuttle boosters, and then followed by the launch clamps. So I'm actually working towards that now. And now we come to the final part, which is actually balancing the center of thrust versus the center of mass, which is actually the tricky part when it comes to space shuttle. And this is actually one of my, was one of my main fears when designing it. So I'm now using the RCS build aid that helps me visualize the forces that will be taking effect when the engines fire. And note that I have made one mistake 
uh, during this and I'm seeing that I'm angling the shuttle main engines but not much is happening and that is because if you look a little bit on the yellow um, yellow arrows I have only one of my main shuttle engines and the OMS system firing rather than all three of my shuttle main engines which is wrong so check your staging check your staging check your staging sorry guys Anyway, uh, what I want to do with the RCS build aid by aligning the engines, you want the torque to be as low as possible. And here torque is 0.991 kilonewton meters. And this torque basically means when the engines are like in this position, how will the whole shuttle turn? So the less the torque, the better. By the way, guys, if you know some way how to very fine align this uh, engines, uh, even on a finer scale, so that I could get zero newton kilonewton meters, please let me know in the comments below. So just make sure on the RCLs build day that you have engines and not translation when you're basically trying to align them. So I'm trying to align as little as possible and even it's it's a little bit fiddly so i think the lowest that i could get it was roughly down to two i managed even to zero point something but that was with wrong staging so i had to fix it so let's see uh, 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 17 well that's in the doable range but i want less okay 3.598 i think that's acceptable i'm willing to live with that okay the now let's fix the groups so group one is toggling the shuttle main engine so that I can turn them off. Custom group 2 is the OMS engines which I want to also be able to toggle and group 3 guys this is especially important toggle gimbal on the main engines. During the initial firing of the engines you don't want them to be gimbaling. You only want them to gimbal after you have decoupled the boosters then it's when you want them to really be gimbling to balance out but otherwise no once again checking on my spoilers elevons and all that jazz and um, then we will need to do one final adjustment before we actually launch it first of all i have to correct my firing sequence uh, and by the way, I had the boosters and engines in the same stage because I was checking the torque values for that. So I'm just checking what the torque is without the boosters and it's... Yeah, it's at least tilting the shuttle in the direction that I was expecting it to, so that's fine. Let's us just quickly undo, put them back and now correct our staging. So one final thing to do if you notice i have to correct the orientation of the space shuttle because i want to be taking off towards east and that basically means putting the shuttle like that and now i'm just struggling to get it positioned correctly onto the middle of the launch pad so just a little bit placement there Okay, now the torque is wrong on the RCS build aid, but ignore that because I have put the engines on the separate stage. So once when engines and the shuttle boosters fire, it will be all right. Okay, guys, now three, two, one, and we have ignition of the main engines. Go and boosters and then launch clamps by the way guys this is in three times times acceleration and for your viewing pleasure i have installed a couple more mods just for beauty's sake one is real plume another is engine lighting that i have been already featured in my ksp mod spotlight then there's stock visual enhancements and there's also scatter this required me to do a little bit accelerated due to a slower fr frame rate on my computer but nobody wants to be watching for hours on end how slow the, mm, the ascent looks like but anyway I just wanted to see how stable the shuttle goes one thing to note before you take off make sure that your main engines gimbal is locked this is super important as this will make your uh, shuttle rock stable okay so 
let's see. Uh, we are coming up on the SRB detachment and we want to do it just before they run out because if they run out they will collide into your wings and then you'll have issues but now if you detach them like this they go forward and you don't have to care about them now immediately disable gimbal on your engines and then you can roll the shuttle 180 degrees which will then make it ride on top of the fuel tank as it is supposed to great Okay, uh, now we just have to ride this big bad boy on top of the fuel tank until we get to orbit. KSP looking beautiful with scatter and stock visual enhancement and also I believe this engine lighting adds a lot to the atmosphere. Otherwise it would be a little bit too dark. Initially I recorded this video with actually without them, but uh, since I saw the engine lighting effects and real plume, I really wanted to add those while I'm showing you the ascent of the space shuttle. I mean, it's just beautiful. I just, and thank you so much KSP devs for producing the 1.1, which actually allowed me to have a semi-decent frame rate on my crappy laptop. Let's turn a little bit to the EVA make a couple of screenshots and as you can see my angle of attack is roughly 20 ish degrees uh, and if you remember that was the angle of the engines that we put in and also that's an angle uh, between the center of lift and center of mass it's kind of um, well in this case we don't care about the lift because we are high up but uh, it's roughly that angle that we are uh, we have to thrust through the center of mass and therefore comes the offset. Now, uh, we will, uh, the real shuttle detaches the fuel tank before it goes orbital and that's exactly what we're gonna do. So we will be detaching it as we hit zero on our periapsis roughly and then we will be using the, um, the OMS to finish up. So we are coming up on the MECO, which is, stands for Main Engine Cutoff. We press Detach, using RCS thrusters to just move slightly away from the fuel tank and turning off the uh, monoprop engines and going, burning for the orbit. Now, since I'm not, I'm far from the apoapsis, I will not burn entirely for the orbit. I'll just burn for a little bit and now I'll wait for the apoapsis to burn for the full orbit. Anyway guys, this uh, this pretty much concludes our episode of Kerbal Engineering and this tutorial. Please uh, like if you like the video, hit subscribe for more KSP content, which definitely more will be coming soon. And uh, so, until the next episode guys, Thank you very much for watching. This is Grumpworks signing off.